everybody, it's Disney Queen Skelly here, and welcome to a new quote-unquote podcast playlist called Chatting Skeletons. Now, um, this isn't exactly a podcast because I have nowhere else to post it <laughs> in terms of, like, it being an actual podcast, but this is, and it's not exactly a vlog either, because one, you can't see my face, and two, I don't, I don't know, like, I just figured I wanted to be kind of unique in that I call it something different than like a vlog or a podcast, you know, so this is Chatting Skeletons. This is where I'll be telling you stories that aren't exactly Disney based, but are, you know, stories I want to share with you guys. And if you have any questions, um, anything you want me to answer, any podcast, you know, you'd like to see. For chatting skeletons, please leave it in the comments below. I will definitely get to them. But for now, the story I would like to tell today is how Harley Baby 45 and I met. So this is going to go back all the way back three years ago to 2017. Um, actually, it's going to go back a little further than 2017. So we're going to start, I think, in my high school days. So in high school, you know, around 15 you generally get your driver's permit, and then you practice for, like, what, six months, and then you go and, well, you practice for, like, a whole year, and then you go get your license at the age of 16, right? Well, my parents didn't do that for me. I didn't get my car until I was 18, and that was only because, you know, at 16, you can get a job here in California, but you need, like, a perm, not a permit, but, like, a, yeah, a worker's permit from your counselor or whatever, from your school, and my parents didn't exactly want to go through all that, and frankly, neither did I, so they had me just do chores around the house, and I earned money that way, and frankly, it was a little bit better, um, but anyway, so I finally got my driver's license when I was 18, which was my senior year, of school and then by the time summer hit I was applying to anything and everything that could possibly hire me. Well I didn't hear back from anybody until I think November of that year and I ended up getting a job at Target and that was my very first job but it was only seasonal so I left in January but now three weeks later I got a job at Knott's Berry Farm in that February and I was in the games department. Now, see, I thought it was just going to be like I was going to work in an arcade and just give people prizes, but no. Turns out Knott's Berry Farm has a bunch of games you can play around the park, and I really never went to, to Knott's Berry Farm that much as a kid, so I didn't really know what they had there in terms of, like, their games. So, you know, I mean, the games were everywhere, so it was it was great. But turns out there were, like, different levels of where you could be in the games department, and they always started you off with a yellow lanyard and a green whistle, meaning you basically just worked the games, like, well, specific games. Um, if you got your blue whistle, you could give people breaks and you got to learn the rest of the games. Um, well, one exception is that you could be a ball catch for a blue whistle at our basketball game called Three Point Challenge or a ball catch for our soccer person over at... Um, the, the soccer game they have. I totally forget what it's called. <laughs> Man, you don't be there for so long and you finally start to forget things. Well, around that time, I had only one friend and a not very nice boyfriend. We will talk about him a little bit later. Um, I'll make that a separate Chatting Skeletons um, podcast episode. But... Around that time, um, I had been brought in with a group of guys. There were seven of us, but six of them were guys. I'd been brought in with a group of guys, and they were really nice people. They were actually super fun. Um, one of them left within, like, two weeks, and then I was the last of the seven to leave. It was almost like a competition. It was actually kind of funny. But in April, I don't know how I didn't come across her before, but in April, I was told that I was going to be put at um, three-point ball catch. And, oh, sorry, totally off topic. It's called the soccer challenge. That's what it's called. Okay, anyways. So I went to three-point, 
and I was supposed to be a ball catch for the, uh, what they call a score keep, even though they don't keep score, the ball catch keeps score, but <clears throat> I digress. Anyway, <laughs> um, I went in and I think she was in the storage room that we had. So I'm walking around and of course, not very Farm on our slow days, nobody's in the park and hardly anyone plays the games, hardly anyone is there. Like, honestly, I'd recommend if you guys ever want to go to Knott's Berry Farm, go during our slow season, which is before spring break, before summer, uh, before Boysenberry, uh, Boysenberry Festival, which is usually between March and April, which, again, spring break, so I guess that coincides together. And then, um, obviously, Halloween is pretty busy during the nighttime, but that's a separate ticket event anyways. Thanksgiving break and um, Christmas break. So if you look on the app, it should tell you like the times that were open. And if you see an earlier part closing, go on that day because odds are you're going to be able to get on every single ride within about two hours, not including lunch, and you'll be able to go home by like one in the afternoon. So anyway, <laughs> um, I'm just kind of walking around scoping out the area. Then this happy go lucky girl comes skipping towards me. She goes, Hi, I'm Deanna. And of course, I jump about six feet back. And literally in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, take me to a different game. She's psycho. But over time, we actually started talking a bit more because that day we were just able to talk and get to know each other. And like her, I never shut up. She never shuts up. So it was like constant conversation unless someone was at the game. And she became my girl. And we went to Disneyland for our first time I think that June or July it, it took a while but over time I just fell in love with her each day and I just couldn't believe I had found a friend like her and in fact around the year after um, I had a former friend of mine move in once we moved to the new house that we're living in now and she lived with me for think a year two years I think two no no no. she lived with me for about a year because she moved out last April so she lived with me about a year and then um around that time I was getting closer and closer to Harley baby because she was there for me whenever I was in a rough spot and this former friend of mine I had really wasn't um, we'll talk about her again in a different Chatting Skeletons episode, but, um, of course, Harley Baby took over as my best friend because she proved to be more of a best friend than anybody I had ever met, and there are days I really don't treat her right, and I feel like crap every time that happens because she's my girl, and I really don't want to lose her. And I tell her that a lot. Like, I told, I always tell her, I don't know what I'd do without you. I don't know what my life would be like without you. And I don't want to know. I, we have this little family right now with her boyfriend and her and then my boyfriend and me. Well, we call them the hubbies. And we plan to move to Washington in a few years together, build a house, build houses together and live together as a little family. And I'm really looking forward to it because I never really thought I had a future in terms of who I was going to be with. But having her in my life makes it all the more real of what my life could be and will be. Because she's making me a better person. She herself is just a wonderful human being. And I don't know why she sticks around a person like me. In fact, out of this channel, I bet majority of you wouldn't actually want to know me in person. I'm not exactly a good person. But I don't know how she sticks around, how she stays here with me, and how she actually manages to stay friends with me without wanting to just walk but 
Anyway, sorry to get super sentimental and teary about this, but I just love her. That's how much I love her. She's my girl, and I really hope I don't lose that opportunity. But anyways, that is how I met Harley Baby 45. Um, next time on Chatting Skeletons, I'll be telling you the story about how I met the hubby, which is actually a pretty fun story. So, um, thank you guys so much for listening to Chatting Skeletons. I love you little skeletons so much. Stay safe. All right, guys. Stay safe.